Are you connected? You connect to the computer or the search the screen? Okay, let me go ahead and look up the controller so it can be at the bottom. It, I'm assuming that it probably does the problem too because OBS wasn't able to do that. Okay, so it was just like the computer was just affecting it effectively. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's just like the computer was just affecting it effectively. Okay, I got the controller. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and turn this key back up. Yeah, yeah. Did you ever get the password for the English? Yeah, I remember. 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 Yeah, I remember.
You guys got real quiet real quick. Right? <laughs> I didn't mean, I didn't mean to stop y'all from talking. <laughs> Don't salute me. I know. I saw two men with stuffed shirts. Maybe they read each other, and one of them said, "I got the memo too." Or something exactly. Like that. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Got a, a friend of mine from he was an elder there in Lamb Pass. I'm over there now. So yeah. Oh, Kevin Haynes. I knew that. That's who you were. That's who I used to be. Well, that's who you were when I was going through the uh, master's program. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Tell me, tell me. Oh, damn, yes. I got pictures of you on my phone. Well, I do. How blessed are you? <laughs> I got them on there. <laughs> Yeah, I, I have shown up in a lot of pictures in a lot of different arenas, and it's like, because you never know where. Can, now that cameras are on your phone, you ne you will always find pictures of yourself being, being silly. And I'm the only one that takes them. The pictures of Is that right? My wife said so nobody else. Nobody else wants to. And I give them to my kids. I have four daughters, ten granddaughters. One is our granddaughter. And my daughter the other day, she said, we'll be able to do the There you go. I was going to say, when it's like, you don't really have to do that now. You can wait a few more years. Flowers and smiles. There you go. That was good. We're going to go ahead and get started. Um, for those, I've already seen some faces in here that were here yesterday morning, so really glad that you're back. Um, a fun way to learn scripture and memorize it and be able to use it, which is such a, a such a, a great help, not just for teachers and preachers, but for everybody to have a, a word from the Bible to be able to talk to different people about it. Charlie's been doing this for a good while. We were here in school together back in the dark ages when we were just using hammer and chisel to take our notes. Um, you got here after those golden Yeah, yeah, you know, some of those. But it's it, it was a long, long time ago. Uh, we've had connection for a long time, uh, family-wise. Uh, his daughter Mariah went through AIM, and I, I got to have her here in school as well, so that was always a blessing also. He's also over there. He's over in uh, Waco at, at New, uh, New Road, the congregation over there. Um, Again, some connection there with us as well. So we're just so glad to have him here. Always enjoy. He loves Sunset. We love him. Love having him around and, and get to be a part of it. So let me pray and we'll get him up here and, and let him have the time that he needs. Father, you are such a good God to us. You uh, bless us in so many ways, uh, not the least of which is through your word and, and encouraging us and telling us who you are and reminding us of all the good things that, that we have, even waiting and it's in store for us. Father, we're grateful for Charlie. Would you bless him today and bless those who are in this class? Uh, Father, help us to be uh, well prepared as we use your word uh, to be able to teach and preach and encourage and reveal again the gospel to others who are searching. Thank you, Father, for the work we get to be a part of and partner with you. In Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 Uh, I wanted to let you know I already saw a lot of cameras come out and take pictures of this. If you were here yesterday, you remember that uh, I, I said we already have a lot of passages memorized because we sing these uh, verses word for word if we know the songs that go with the verses. And I said I would write them on the board. So uh, go ahead and, and uh, snap I saw one person writing them down I'm about to erase them because I will need the board for the class today remember yesterday I said I uh, I encouraged us to be fully involved and not to write notes today is the day for writing notes uh, because of the, the change of material <clears throat> 
So I'm going to get... Not yet. <laughs> no, not, not yet. Okay, okay. That's all right. I got some preparatory stuff here I need to do. Let me get that. And don't forget to, if you didn't uh, trade business cards with me yesterday, let's do that. I'll pull out some of my cards and leave them up here on the podium. And when I'm finished, if you wouldn't mind, uh, you can take mine and leave me one of yours. Okay, did we get our pictures taken? Oh, we're getting pictures taken of the board. Could you pose next to it like the morning does? <laughs> oh goodness. This is yeah, it's too fast. Yeah. You don't want to see that out there on Facebook. <laughs> Oh, you crazy people. <laughs> All right, y'all. Um, when I was a student here, one of the things we had to learn, well, one of the books that they had us read over and over and over and over was the Gospel of Luke. Um, and then... Also with that, we had to memorize what was called chapter locations. One significant something out of each chapter in the Gospel of Luke. Well, consequently over the years, my favorite Gospel is Luke because I'm just so familiar with it. And it's also just, it speaks to me because Luke is the Gospel for the underdog, you know? It's the gospel for the person who really needs to know that Christ cares for you. Uh, and so I, I love the gospel of Luke, and I thought, well, as a secondary uh, part to this memorizing, we could spend some time, and I could teach you some of what, for me, these are memory tricks, uh, using the actual numbers, 1 through 24, there are 24 chapters in the Gospel of Luke, using the actual numbers to draw little pictures that will help you remember what's in the chapters. Uh, I used this at our congregation four or five years ago when uh, Luke happened to be the theme of Lads to Leaders, and I was teaching our kiddos, and boy, they were eating it up. They, they could remember what was in the chapters of Luke. Uh, I've just had a lot of different situations where I've shared this kind of stuff. And, uh, and it's, it's helpful. It's helpful. You know, I always tell people, and I heard this somewhere else, you know, if you can get in the barn, you can find the horse. So if you can get in the chapter, you can find the thing you're looking for, right? And, uh, and let me show you these. This... This right here is worth the price of admission. Have you ever seen these big, fat markers? Uh, that, that's what I wrote these, and they're so much better than the little ones you buy at the store. Uh, anyway, uh, I just wanted to let you in on a secret. <laughs> All right, well, let's go to the Gospel of Luke, okay? And uh, in chapter 1... I can just remind you, I really don't expect you to like to look at, be looking at the text. Really what I hope you'll do is take out a, a little notepad or something and copy down the little pictures that I help you uh, formulate. Uh, so chapter 1, uh, do we need a pen? I have a bunch of pens in my bag. Anybody need a pen or something like that? Okay. Tons of Anybody? Uh, okay. 
So in Luke chapter 1, we get the unique uh, setting of the angel Gabriel coming down twice. He comes down twice in Luke chapter 1. So you make one, the number one, you make it an arrow. For, and you, you just tell yourself to remember it's or you write it down. The angel Gabriel came down twice. Uh, the first time was to uh, Zacharias to say that he and Elizabeth were going to have John the Baptist. And the second time was to Mary to say that she was going to become the mother of Jesus. Okay? And just consequently, I, there, this is beside the point, but it's still part of chapter 1. John is actually born in chapter 1. John the Baptist is born in chapter 1. All right. Now, you're really going to love this next piece of uh, technology that I have. You know, most people use PowerPoint, but not me. I'm low tech. All right. What? Okay. Everybody, what is this number? Two. Okay, so we're heading into chapter two, right? But I want you to watch something magical. Don't, do not move your eyes. Watch this. It's magical. Jesus. Oh. What letter does that make? A two. A two? It makes a J. Okay, I want you to remember this. Because in Luke chapter 2, Je Jesus is born. Alright? So you take your two and you figure out the best way you can to make a J out of it on your notes. Um, Jesus is born in Luke the second chapter. It also happens to be the chapter where uh, at the age of 12, he was left at the temple in Jerusalem. You remember his parents would travel to Jerusalem. And that's the only account that we have of Jesus in his young life, other than, you know, escaping to uh, Egypt from Bethlehem, that kind of thing. Uh, but the 12-year-old Jesus, that's this, this is one of the things about the Gospel of Luke. There are so many things that are just unique to Luke. And I wish I had all the time in the world to teach you that. Um, all right. Chapter 2. Chapter 3. You're going to love this one. You ready? Yes. Here it is. You make a B out of the 3 because that's the chapter where Jesus gets baptized. Jesus is baptized. See, I'm not jumping around today like I did yesterday. <laughs> so in this one, who came down twice? The angel. The angel Gabriel. Amen. And he, he told uh, Zacharias that he was going to have a son, son in his old age and told Mary that she was going to become the mother of Jesus. The two becomes a J, which stands for Jesus being born. Jesus is born in Bethlehem there. Uh, so that's where you've got the shepherds who come and make their visit. Uh, and uh, those things. And the three, you add that line there and it becomes a B for Jesus is baptized uh, by John the Baptist. Okay? All right. Chapter four. Again, you use the number. But what I want you to do here is highlight this, make it a thick line, and make that a thick line for the temptations. Now the temptations of Jesus are found really in two places in detail. Matthew 4, Luke 4. So just thicken those lines on the number 4. And in Luke chapter 4, Jesus is tempted. I'm moving along at such a great speed that we're probably going to be done in 20 minutes. <laughs> okay. All right. Huh? We got the test after that, right? Yeah, yeah. You'll have the test after that. 
Um, so if you look in your Bible at Luke chapter 5, right at the beginning of Luke 5 is the story of Jesus getting into Simon Peter's boat and saying, let's put out the nets for to catch some fish. And uh, Simon says, well, we've worked hard all, all night and haven't caught anything, but because you say so, we'll let, we'll let down the nets. And they let down the nets and they catch so many fish that they fill up both their boat and James and John's boat and they are on the verge of sinking. Uh, Peter falls before Jesus and says, uh, go away from me, Lord, I'm a sinful man. And what does Jesus tell Peter then? <coughs> hmm? Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. I'm going to make you fishers of men. Take your five and just put you a nice little fish hook on that. Okay? I'm going to make you fishers of men. Fishers of men. That's how you're going to remember that. <coughs> This is just one thing out of each chapter, really, to kind of give you a, a peg, a memory peg, uh, and you'll be able to go back and find it. One of the things that happens in chapter 6 of Luke, um, verse, chapter 6, verse 12, Jesus went out to a mountainside. He prayed all night to God, and when the morning came, He chose how many? Twelve. Aha, uh -huh. six times two. <clears throat> Six times two is twelve, so that's the choosing of the twelve apostles. Everybody got that? Bless you. Salute. Bless you. All right. Chapter 7 includes one of my absolute favorite stories of all time, and it's only found in the Gospel of Luke. It's in uh, verses um, 36 through the end of the book, uh, end of the chapter. The uh, sinful woman who comes to Jesus while he is in the home of Simon the Pharisee, and uh, uh, she begins to weep at his feet. You remember this story? She begins to cry tears. She, she kisses Jesus' feet. She uses her hair to, to clean his feet. All of that kind of thing. So we're going to take the number seven and we're going to give her an eye. We're going to give her some, some curly hair maybe, okay? And we're going to run some tears down. So there she is. And she's got that long hair so that she can uh, clean Jesus' feet. That's in Luke chapter seven. You don't have, you know, <laughs> I'm, no, I'm certainly no Picasso. Well, you might think so with something like that. But uh, <laughs> anyway, I'm no uh, great artist, that's for sure. So uh, you do your best just like I try to do my best. Okay. So what you, what you say in that one? Now, this is the woman who is uh, cleaning Jesus' right. feet with her hair. And Jesus says, uh, Simon... Who's going to love? Uh, who, who's going to love more? The person who's been forgiven of a little, or the person who's been forgiven of a lot? <clears throat> and uh, he says she she has demonstrated her love. Okay, just to remind. How many of us make eights like this? Do you make your eight like this? Yes. Yeah. Nearly all of us. Yeah. I mean, I know some people do this kind of thing. But that's not me. I, th hope, I hope that you make an eight like I did the first one. Because that will help us on the next memory peg, okay? And that is you start and then you stop. You don't finish the eight. So you, you start your eight, but then you stop here at the bottom and it's an S. And that's going to be the parable of the sower. Or the parable of the soils, however you like to call it. The parable of the sower. So you start the eight, you just don't finish it. And if, you know, I guess you could do dots if you want to just re remind yourself that that is an eight. <clears throat> okay. 
Okay, this next one I love. Even more than the, the doing the drawing the little lady with her tears coming down. All right. What happens in Luke chapter 9? Well, one of the things that happens in Luke chapter 9 is the feeding of the 5,000. So this time, you just take your 9, and it becomes a plate and a fork for the feeding of the 5,000. Feeding of the 5,000. Now, you know... You don't just do a nine like I've done it, but right next to it, feeding of the 5,000, so that you'll remember, what did that goofy plate and fork mean? Okay, that's in Luke chapter 9. And you can put more prongs on your fork than I do if you want to, whatever you want to do. Um, this next one... This is something that uh, me and my sunset roommate, we always, had a, we always had a thing going where we would ask each other, okay, on a scale of 1 to 10, what did you think? You know, on a scale of 1 to 10, how did you like that movie or, you know, whatever. Well, it fits perfect with Luke chapter 10 to me because this is the story, and Luke 10 is the story of the Good Samaritan. And on a scale of 1 to 10... The Good Samaritan, he's, he's bound to be a 10, right? Yeah. He, he's a good guy. So I would, you know, that's what I'd write in my notes. On a scale of 1 to 10, you might even say 1 to 10 on a scale. And then just put the Good Samaritan, he's a 10. Circle your 10, you know. Let, be sure that, uh, that you remember that he's, he's a 10 on a scale of 1 to 10. <laughs> Okay, this next one really is, I mean, you, you can, we'll do the number here, written, but what you need to do is look up at me, because in Luke chapter 11, at the very beginning of the chapter is where his disciples, Jesus' disciples come to him and they say, Lord, teach us to pray. And it's these, it's the edges of your hands are the 11. Teach us to pray. The 11, okay, is like that. Lord, teach us to pray. That's in Luke chapter 11. Uh, let's pause. Don't look at your paper. Anybody got kind of a favorite one so far? Six. Six? Okay, and can you tell me what it is? Huh? 12, getting of the 12. How do you, six times two is yeah. 12, right? Okay, getting, uh, choosing the apostles. Anybody? anybody? I got the easy one. Was there another one? Five. I love five, five, the fish hook? Fish. The fish hook? Yeah. Okay. Three, baptism of Jesus. Okay, and when you put that line and make it a B for baptism? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, good. All right, I just want to be sure you're, you're you know, we're tracking and, and you're maybe retaining some. Um, this one, not too much of a stretch, but kind of. Uh, Luke chapter 12 has this story about the rich fool. Thou fool, tonight your soul is required of you, right? Remember, he's the one who said, I'll build bigger barns. Again, that's a story only in the Gospel of Luke. But uh, here's how I try to remember it. You know, I make the two for the twelve. You, you would normally make a, you know, one and a two. But I, and then I put a couple of ones there and it mm, maybe looks like a dollar sign. Yeah. You know, you can kind of make it look like, if you twist your mind, you can make it look like a dollar sign. He's the rich fool. The rich fool. Okay, I can see that one wasn't a home run. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, it's the rich, yeah. He's he's rich. It's supposed to look like a dollar sign. We're not going to remember these if we don't study the Bible, uh, study this chapter. After we study the chapter, we can remember. We okay. Don't think that we're going to go look at these and decipher the chapter. Well, yeah, yeah, you know, if, if you didn't know the story of the rich fool, it'd hardly do you any good to know that it's in Luke chapter 12. That's 
Yeah. All right, what do people normally think of when they hear of the number 13? Is that good or bad? Bad. Oh, the number 13's bad. So bad news, that's number 13. And the bad news in Luke chapter 13 is uh, if you don't repent, you're going to perish. Repent or perish. That's the bad news in Luke 13. Repent. Huh? 13.3. Right. Turn or burn. <laughs> Repent or perish. Luke 13, verses 1 through 3. That's exactly right. Okay. You know that uh, 3 could also be a crippled lady holding on to a cane there. I told you I'm in heels on the Sabbath. Hey! You take it home and do what you want with it. <laughs> you your repent or perish, but you won. And then you get And make that an R. Oh! Okay. So, like that? No, like do you a three? Do you three and just draw a long one so that it goes down past it and you got R on top of B. Okay. <laughs> I can't see it here. I'm sure. Uh, you want to come demonstrate? Yeah! Bring him on! I love this stuff. This is awesome. Are you okay? Are you okay? Yeah, ma'am. Thank you. So you got an R and then you got a P. Aha! Uh -huh. uh -huh. Okay, an R and a P. Well, yeah, Easier for you to see than for me. That's a good imagination. Uh huh. Well, that's that's good. It's, that's yeah. all right. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Chapter fourteen. This is something. This is something I, I don't know that we talk very much about when we cover. Usually, when we go to Luke fourteen, we're going there for the uh, counting the cost of discipleship. I'm not touching that. Uh, not that I don't teach on it. That's just not the symbol that I'm going to give you. It, what I'm going to give you has to do with the first part of the chapter where Jesus goes to um, a, a Pharisee's house, not a heresy's faust, <laughs> but a, Jesus goes to a Pharisee's house and he um, watches how people are taking their seats. And you've got some people who are taking the seats of honor and and... He tells them in verse 11, everyone who humbles himself will be exalted and everyone who exalts himself will be humbled. So this, the 14, you just move the one over here to that for humility or humble. Everyone who humbles himself, you just move the one over to overlap that edge of the four. And it becomes an H. For humble. Okay? Everyone who humbles himself will be exalted. Everyone who exalts himself will be humble. I wrote in the margin of my Bible, it's better to humble yourself than to be humiliated by somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> okay. How many of us know already what's in Luke chapter 15? The prodigal son. Oh, there you go. The prodigal son. So... It's actually three things. A lost sheep at the beginning, a lost coin, and a lost son. We, we know that those are the three parables Jesus tells in Luke chapter 15. So I take the uh, one and the five, which to me a five kind of looks like an S. You, you can see if, if that was curved, that'd be an S, right? Wow. So <laughs> this is the L for lost. Uh, lost sheep, we'll make that five an S, we'll go ahead and make it an S. And a lost son. And okay. the lost coin. Yeah, the lost coin is in the middle, but coin doesn't start with an S. <laughs> <laughs> I'm teasing you, Anna. <laughs> yeah, lost... Lost sheep, lost coin, and lost son. That's Luke chapter 15. Okay? Alrighty. Uh, okay, I like chapter 16 also because you get to have a little fun with it. Um, 
Luke 16 is the rich man and Lazarus, right? Uh, the rich man, he's in a bad place, isn't he? I mean, he's, he's in a bad place of torment. So, um, and what is it that he, he wants? He, he's begging Father Abraham to let Laz, uh, Lazarus do something for him. One drop of water. Yeah, just one little drop of water. So I would take the one from the 16 and I'd turn it into somebody, you know, just make, make it a person. And, uh, and here's the six. Are you ready? It's a ladle. That's a ladle where you could dip it in some water and give him just a little, yeah, well, you, you little you touch of water. water when you were a kid, didn't you? Huh? You pumped water when you Well, were I kid. know about those things. Yeah, I remember the, yes, I the tin I cup at my grandfather's house and how cold that water was. Get in trouble for not priming the pump or leaving that <laughs> water there. Oh, Lord. Okay, <clears throat> so... Write that, be sure and write down your notes, not just draw this little picture because you'll go home and say, what is that? <laughs> be sure and jot down something about a ladle and uh, just a drop of water, and that's the number 16. The little dipper. <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Now, um, I should have, you know, like I took the two and I did that magic with the two. I should have done the same thing with the seven because just please agree with me. That, that you can take a seven. If I took that seven and just did like that with it, wouldn't it be an L? Yeah. Yes. It'd be an L, wouldn't it? If I just took it and did like that. Okay. So number 17 is the is the ten lepers who come to Jesus. So you, you, you tilt your L over and you've got those lepers. Again, that's a story only in the Gospel of Luke. Yeah. These guys are out on the fringe territory. Ten lepers, they can't be with their families and one of the, they cry out to Jesus for mercy and He heals them. Only one comes back to say thank you, and he was a Samaritan. He was a Samaritan. He was a foreigner. He was a Samaritan. Yeah, Jesus makes the Samaritan the hero of that story and the hero of the Good Samaritan yeah. story. Uh, right. Okay. Now, now I'm going to do something pretty similar to what you did a minute ago up here with number 18. As you look in your Bible and you're there at the beginning of Luke chapter 18, Jesus tells a parable so that, uh, that He would teach His men to pray and never give up. And He talks about uh, two different things. The first thing is this persistent widow. But the second thing is uh, uh, a Pharisee and a publican. Not a Republican, <laughs> but a publican, uh, a tax collector. So this is real easy. If you take that eight and then the one and you put them close together. See, now this time I would have made an eight like that person I talked about earlier. You make an eight like that and then you put your one and it becomes the Pharisee and the publican. Hmm. Two P's. You, uh -huh. see, you see the P's? P here, P there. Mm -hmm. Pharisee, publican. Remember the one guy thought he was oh so righteous? Yeah. And the publican, the, the tax collector, he just stood at a distance and beat his chest and said oh God have mercy on me, a sinner. And Jesus said one of those men went home justified that day. And it wasn't the Pharisee. One of those men went home justified that day. Okay? All right, number 19. This is a great story. We all know uh, the story of Zacchaeus at the beginning of chapter 19. We're going to make a tree out of the number one. And the number nine is just going to come up here and 
Look, be looking out of that tree. There's a one and a nine. There's Zacchaeus. He's looking out of that tree. He's looking for Jesus to come by. And again, be sure you, you write a little note to yourself as to what you're, what you're doing here. Is that just jot down Zacchaeus looking out of a tree. <clears throat> now this next one will tell you uh, something about yourself. Maybe how, uh, I don't know if it may say how old you are or if you watched a television with your grandparents or something like that when you were very young. <laughs> Uh, chapter 20, do you remember a television show called 20 Questions? 20 Questions. There was a television. And Luke chapter 20 is just full of questions. It starts off with um, Jesus uh, being questioned. Tell us where you get your authority to do these things. And then Jesus says, I'll tell you what, I'll ask you a question in verse 3. John's baptism, was it from heaven or from men? Okay. Um, you go down to about the middle of the chapter, verses 20 through 25, 26. There's another question. Oh, teacher, we know that you teach only what's right. Uh, should we give taxes to Caesar or not? There's another question. And uh, Jesus asks them a question. Here, give me a coin. Whose picture is on the coin? Uh, Caesar's. Well, then give to Caesar what is Caesar's and then give to God what is God's. Uh, next, verses 27 and following, in, uh, also in chapter 20, they give this big scenario. The Sadducees come because they don't believe in the resurrection. They say, well, this guy was married to this woman and he died. And, and because of the law of Moses, the brother, one of his brothers had to marry this woman. And, and that happened over and over and over, six, seven times. Uh, now, when in the resurrection, whose wife is she going to be? That's just way too much confusion, Jesus. And uh, so that's a, it's a setup with questions. And then finally, the chapter ends with Jesus uh, asking a question himself. He says uh, in verse 41, how is it that they say that Christ is the son of David? So question, 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 question. All through uh, chapter 20. So I would just put uh, 20 questions. Benjamin suggested you put a tail on the O and make it a Q. Put a tail on the O and make it a what? Oh! Sweet! Good, that's good, yeah. Very smart. Thank you. Yeah, man, that's good. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, now remember our two. The orange two. We're, we're down to chapter 20, uh, 21 here. So, what number is that? <laughs> What letter is that? Okay. <laughs> Very good. Very good. In chapter 21, uh, if you really gonna want to get a bunch of good discussion going, uh, teach Luke chapter 21 or Matthew chapter 24. Uh, Jesus predicts the end of Jerusalem. That's what Luke 21 is about. So the two becomes a J, right? So, Jesus... And the one, I just kind of cheat and make it a P for predict. The end of Jerusalem. 70 AD. So that's 21. Okay. Jesus predicts the destruction of Jerusalem. All right. 22, guess what both twos become? <laughs> J's. Because one stands for Jesus and the other, Judas. 22. Jesus and Judas. Judas betrays Jesus in Luke chapter 22. All right. 
The one who said that they liked how the first number three became a B. You'll like the same thing here. The two, 23. The two is Jesus. Right? The J for Jesus. Uh, Jesus is crucified and uh, buried. There's your three, the, the B for buried. Of course, before he's buried, he's got to be crucified. Jesus is crucified and buried. That's in 23. Okay? All right. And then finally, we've reached the end of the Gospel of Luke. Chapter 24. Guess what the two becomes? A, a J for Jesus. <laughs> Jesus's, and remember how we did the four with the, the thickening of the, yeah. the, that? That is the tomb is empty. That's Luke chapter 24. The tomb. Earlier it was the temptations, right? Luke chapter 4. And then here the T stands for the tomb being empty. Whew! We did it! Alright. Congratulations. The next book. <laughs> Uh, do we need to go over any of the other one, uh, any of these again? No, we don't have a suggestion. Oh, a suggestion. Okay. On uh, chapter nineteen, one nine. Okay, where you have that nine coming out, Zacchaeus is peering. That's a P. Make the nine a P. He's Zacchaeus is peering. peering. Peering from the top of the tree, okay. That works better for me. That works for you. And really, that's what it comes down to. What works for you? You know, um, why would anybody want to know where the story of the good... By the way, where is the story of the Good Samaritan? Ten. How do you know that? Because on a scale of one to ten, he was a ten. Right. Why would you want to know where the story of the Good Samaritan is? Well, you might be talking with someone and, and that story has a principle that you want to share with, with the person, right? Yep. Um, anything else? Anybody else? I'm going to let y'all go again early today then. All right? I think you should quiz us. You want me to quiz you? Anybody feel like being quizzed? <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that for me? Okay, thank you, thank you. That's uh, all right, thank you. Yeah, don't forget to swap business cards with me if you want to, or just trade info. Back here? So I've been thinking about what you taught us yesterday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how do you generate those mental images? Like, what's your process? Oh, wow. Okay, well, obviously, part of the key to those mental images from yesterday is that uh, you're, you're exaggerating the image. It's huge or it's very small. It's colorful. Uh, you want to associate a, a bright color uh, if you can with it. But how do you come up with the image? You want to come up with an image that sounds like. It doesn't have to be but something that sounds like the thing. So we, instead of saying, uh, well, we had over here, pouring, the pouring spirit. He was a spirit pouring spirit. See, that sounds, once you know, it kind of sounds like pour in spirit. Uh, the morning dove, I came up with her because I had to come up with something that was mourning because it's blessed are those who mourn. And the only thing I could come up with for me was a, a, a mourning dove. Um, and, and the comforter, you know, that was fairly simple. And, uh, simple. and, and that, uh, that came, you know, pretty easily. And that was an exact match. This one back here is a little bit different because it's reversed. I start with the globe, 
and put the mink coat on it. And then I have all the ladies go, ooh, you know. And that's what helps it to be memorable. Like with the dog, you know, how are you going to forget that? Uh, you, you, because you got to have something that signals thirst. Um, and the Hungry Jack, you know, I had you stomp and do the Hungry Jack biscuits. Uh, blessed are those who hunger and thirst. So, uh, I just, honestly, I just sat down. Once I had read the book that I can't remember. <laughs> once I had read the book about how to do this, I thought, well, I'm going to try something. And I just sat down with pen and paper and, and thought, what are words that sound like those words that I can use in an exaggerated way to help teach others? And I tried it a, a couple of times, and, and it's... Well, and George, it you could, listen, it's sending a decoded message. Yeah. If you were sending a decoded message to somebody, you want it simple enough that they could figure it out, but you wanted to... <clears throat> And like the merci, you know, that the, the Frenchman merci. That's not mercy, but it's close enough. And, it, and you can remember that. So that's the best answer I can give you. Yeah. Brother, do you have more books and more verses that you just do like that? Or you just, do you do every verse that you've learned like that? Or no. I, th I think the things that, that I have been working on also include the Ten Commandments. <clears throat> include the ten plagues in Egypt. Like, uh, I wasn't going to share any of this, but it's, Sorry. you know, uh, <laughs> oh, I won't, I won't. But I, it's a work in progress. But yes, yeah, I will have uh, all of this uh, worked up. And I know I don't have any books on it. <laughs> I wish but I did. Listen, you know what would be good at Thanksgiving or such, like this instead of talking about... Uh, uh, Politics. We could say, how would we? <laughs> how would we? <laughs> you know, get the family together. How would? You, how could you say this? You know, uh huh. Or something like that. Yeah. And and, and see, and whoever doesn't gets a quarter. Uh, <laughs> okay. I tell you what was great to me was uh, the Sizemore boys who were in here yesterday. How old are you guys? You're 12? 10. And 10. They went and told their dad how much fun they had in here yesterday. So, man, I was, that, that put me over the top. I really feel great about that. All right, all right. All right, everybody. Yes. The book that you couldn't remember the name of was legit about. Memory Palace? Uh, building memories? Probably. Yeah, I, I could not say. I cannot remember. Uh, but Memory Palace is, is something I've mentioned, yes. There's a guy by the name of Ron White uh, that does a lot of this memory stuff, and he's done, you know, some scripture things. If anybody wanted to Google him, he does Black Belt Memory Program. Ron White. That's a different Ron White than I was thinking. Thank you. Uh, Jerry Lucas, the former basketball player, uh, combined with uh, uh, Harry Lorraine that just died. He was like 94. And he was doing that memory stuff late in his 90s writing books. And I got one side from him. So there's lots of great resources out there. For great. Yeah. This is Wayne DeWint. If anyone wants to maybe ask him, it sounds like he's done a lot of reading in this in this arena. So. But it's, it's helpful. You know, okay. doing those things. Yeah. Things right. Doing having it at your recall. Yeah. Yeah. Having it. <clears throat> smell is a big thing, too. If uh -huh. you put a smell, that's one of the most powerful memory tools you have. And if you could put that in your image, you know. Yeah. Helps okay. You Excellent. Yeah. Well, like, I appreciate that. Those. Brother Yick. Yeah. He, he so mentioned Jerry Lucas, Ron who Ron also Ron has Ron written Ron a book called Ron Ready, Set, Ron Believe, Ron where he has uh, pictures in the book of biblical things. Uh, he has the books of the Bible uh -huh. in picture form. This is what you were telling me about yesterday, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Ready, Set, Believe by Jerry Lucas? Yeah. Uh, okay. And he has uh, Paul's first missionary journey to uh, 
uh, and traces all the places he went, and, yes, and he has it all in picture form. Okay. Okay. Oh, that would be really helpful, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah. yeah. He has a lot of things in the book. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't want to hold anyone past what you're comfortable <laughs> staying, but yeah. thank you so much for coming. But if, if you do this with our youngsters, you know, yeah. youngsters, because it sticks in their head, it's going to be Thank you. Is Sherry still the secretary? <laughs> Tell her hello. Nothing's changed in that corner. Okay. Hey, man. It's been a pleasure. Really happy to have had you in the class. Thank you. It's such an honor. Hey, such an honor to have you come. Thank you. I really appreciate y'all coming. Nice to hear the above class. Brother, 35, 36 years. Yeah, a long time. Well, it's only one reason. Oh, some. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, I had one that he made a mistake. He told me he was like that, and he ended up one of my classes one time, and I knew what he was up to. So, because he told me he liked right. to do that. Thank you. Bye bye. Years ago, the purest water in the United States was in Oiko, Texas. The purest water? Yeah, anywhere in the United States was in Oiko, Texas. Really? My father's a gospel. They buried me in 1969. There you go. I've never left anyone in the long That's very kind to hear someone say. I did it. 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 After I said whatever you want to do. But yeah, like, like, you know, call for his Well, in the last time I came, it's been a long time. But you like this. Yeah. She was a woman. She was the yeah. 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 back. And she came out. And she came out. She had an arm. And she came out. 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 And now, where do you live? My wife and I live in Florida. Okay. I'm out in 20 miles north of Daytona. Down in Tennessee. Well, he goes to the county. That's right. And, um, you know, the congregation there is the bell. It's the only congregation in Slackville County. So, we're in. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> and we've been going as groups as uh, individuals for several years now. Huh? Uh, Down to Honduras? Yes. Uh, they're my people. They're my family. See, I was born and raised in a farmhouse in Kentucky. 